Hello my dear students, in this lecture we will try to see how to understand the plane beam reinforcement details and this is a completely a new thing which we have not seen in our earlier drawing also. Okay. So what I am going to do, first I will uh, play a video of a reinforcement or I will be, okay first let me start with the drawing itself, I show, I'll show you the drawing first. Okay. So this is a schedule of RCC plane beam and uh, all these are the beams numbering okay like PB1, PB2 we had seen. So these are the beam, they have done the grouping like PB1, PB2 and PB9, it's a one group and the size is 9 inch by 18 inch, PB3 is another group which is 9 inch by 18 inch, then we have PB3A, PB7, PB7, 8 and 8, this is 9 inch by 18 inch, PB4, PB12, PB16, it is 9 inch by 18 inch, so in this way all the grouping has been done and the sizes are given here. Now the important thing for us to understand is the reinforcement details, right, you can see all the steel has been placed here. Uh, so this drawing up is a bit difficult, not difficult, you need to understand and you have to apply your logic, that's it, yeah. So now just concentrate here, I'll go with the bottom steel first, see, see this is the bottom steel I have and this much part we have it as a top steel, okay. Now when I say bottom steel, always you have to remember the bottom straight, this is the first thing, it is a straight bar you have to remember and then you remember the curtainment bar, okay. In the same way when I say of top steel, first remember the mid span and then you can go with the extra steel and the extra steel at the support, right. So I hope this much is clear. First we'll understand this particular beam that is PB1, okay. So for PB1, what is the size? It's a 9 inch by 18 inch, very good. Now coming to the steel reinforcement, first look at to the straight bar. What is a straight bar? What is what is that mentioning about? Straight, your straight, it is in the bottom, okay. So you have to provide a 16 diameter 2 bar straight in the bottom, very good. And curtailment, curtailment bar in the sense, which you are going to do the curtail, I will show you practically what curtailment bar is all about. I will just play this video. Yeah, so you can see one bar here. Yeah, you can see one bar here which has been curtailed. See the bottom two bar are going straight. This bar is going completely and the one which is at the back side that is also going completely. Whereas the one in the middle it is curtail. Curtail in the sense it is cut. It is going only up to this distance. So this is called as my curtailment bar. Got it? So that is why in the drawing it is mentioned. In the mention that curtailment bar you have to provide a 16 diameter one bar. Right? I hope this much is clear. Now coming to the top steel. Always look for the mid span first, mid span 12 diameter 2 bar, that means practically on the top you can see, top you can see 2, bar, two, di two bars of, uh, 2 bars have been, have been running completely, that means this is one bar which is going completely at the top, similarly you see one more bar here which is going completely, so this is a straight bar what we denote and it is called as top straight bar, okay, yeah. Now it is mentioned here mid span 12 diameter 2 bar. Now there is something written here extra steel at continuous support and extra steel at end support. Okay. So to understand this, I will just run the video and I will show you. Okay. Before that, I will show you a drawing only. So through drawing you will be able to understand. Now what do you mean by extra at the end support and the continuous support? So for that we will take a plane beam layout. Now for example, let me consider this particular beam and just concentrate here. It is very simple. Okay. Just concentrate on this beam. Okay. So for this beam, how many columns I have? I have one column here and I have another column here, right? Now when I consider this column, this column has a beam going in this direction also, right? If I take this particular beam column, I have a beam running in this direction. Similarly, if I take this particular beam, I don't have a beam running in this direction. See, forget about this vertical. Right now, I'm looking at the horizontal part only because I'm considering this, this two column. That is why I'm considering this, I'm going horizontally, okay? So here if I consider this column, I have a beam running in this direction, whereas if I consider this column, I don't have any beam running in this direction. So when I put the reinforcement here, since I have a beam running here, this becomes my continuous. This becomes my continuous. For this column, there is a beam which is running in the left direction. It's called as continuous. So that is why you can see it here. So it initially it will take some time for you to understand. So what is written here? Extra steel at continuous support is written extra steel at end support. Again to put it in a better way, we'll go in this way. Now for this column, this is a continuous. So I can say this is extra steel on the left. Similarly for this column, I don't have a 
beam running in this direction so this is my end condition this is my end support like if i go back so it's written extra still at end support so for this column i don't have any beam here so this becomes my end column if i have a beam running it becomes my continuous column got it i hope this much is clear now for this i'll show you a practical video only and then we'll uh, try to understand that so uh, i'm running the video once okay and i'll pause at one particular point and you have to tell me which is a continuous support and which is a end support so let me go a bit forward you just see the video and then i'll come a bit and explain you about all these things now for example if i consider this particular beam okay if i consider this particular beam uh, see i have a column here i have a column here i'll take the same uh, beam and i'll show through drawing see initially it may take some time for you to understand but it's very simple we'll try to understand uh, so right now we are looking at this particular right now we are looking at this particular uh, beam okay i'll show where it is exactly yeah okay so this is that we are looking pb6 okay now tell me i have a column here i have a column here so for this beam which is my end support and which is my continuous so for this particular beam this column is the end column because beyond this you don't have any beam running so this is my end column good similarly for this beam i have a column here but again in this direction there is a beam running right so that means this particular column is a continuous column for me right i hope this much is clear now for the same pb6 check out what is the reinforcement given I'll go to PB6 because this is PB6 written here. I'll go to PB6. Let me find where is PB6. Yeah, my PB6 is here. So this is PB6. It's a 9 inch by 18 inch. And what is given in the bottom still for the PB6? I'll write in this way. Concentrate here. Yeah. So what is given in the bottom still? You have to provide a 16 diameter 2 bar in the bottom. We'll see practically. Can you see a 16 diameter 2 bar has been given? In the bottom you can see a 16 diameter 2 bar is given in the bottom okay and then you have to provide a 16 diameter 1 bar that is a curtailment bar that means bottom you have to provide a 16 diameter 3 bar and you can see practically here 1 2 and 3 bars have been provided whereas this bar the middle bar is a curtailment bar okay when i say curtailment bar it is not running fully it has been stopped from here to here okay this is your curtailment bar got it similarly if i go to the top still now for pv6 if i go to the top still top you have to provide a 12 diameter 2 bar it is in a mid span that means you can see a 12 diameter 2 bar here so one bar this is 12 diameter one bar straight and this is 12 diameter another bar okay this much is understood yeah now one thing which we are supposed to understand is this point pv6 i'll come here see what is written extra steel at continuous support and extra steel at end support extra steel at continuous support and extra steel at end support first we'll go with the extra steel at end support okay you have to provide a 12 diameter 2 bar so where is the end support this is my end support agree with me because beyond this you don't have a beam and same thing we had seen in drawing so you can see a 12 diameter 2 bar given here you can see one bar similarly you have provided another bar here so this is a 12 diameter 2 bar which has been stopped here similarly if i come to the other side yeah again extra still at continuous support that means so i have a column here but there is a beam going in this direction so this becomes my continuous support now so what is there in the drawing for that again there you have to provide that is extra still at continuous support you have to provide a 16 diameter 2 bar so practically you can see it here yeah so practically you can see we have provided a 16 diameter 1 bar this is one and this is another bar you can got it so this is how you are supposed to understand the drawing now one thing might have come in your mind that you told everything but to what distance we are supposed to keep all these things like from here to here what is the distance from here to here what is the distance that we'll try to see a bit later right first we'll try to understand all the fundamentals through this i hope up to here your concepts are clear now i'll go i'll run all this uh, video and then i'll stop at one particular point and we'll take that as an assignment and you have to tell me how it looks okay so just see again you can see that continuous right 
see how it is how it has been given i'll stop at this particular video right i'll stop here right now the beam which we are looking you know i'll show you the same beam on the drawing right now we are at this level so we are looking at this particular beam we are looking at this particular beam that is pb13 we are looking at this particular beam that is pb13 now we'll try to see the reinforcement what is given in pb13 so i'll go to pb13 so my pb13 is here okay pb2 value pb13 is here what all is given just read out i'll start with the bottom steel now bottom steel out to provide a 16 diameter 2 bar we'll see practically whether 16 diameter 2 bar has been provided exactly we can see a 16 diameter 2 bar here this is one 16 diameter bar which has gone completely and the one on the other side this is my 16 diameter 2 bar which is a straight bar okay now again come back again what is written here again come to the curtainment in the curtainment you have to provide a 16 diameter 2 bar as a curtainment bar 16 diameter 2 bar is a curtainment so can you see a 16 diameter 2 bar has been given here in the middle portion so here one and next to that yeah let me go back see here this is one 16 diameter one bar and then again behind that we have given another bar this is 16 diameter two bar got it similarly i'll go to the top bar bottom is done i'll go to the top now so now coming to the top steel first we'll have to see the mid span in mid span you have to provide a 12 diameter two bar so we'll see and the mid span whether 12 diameter two bar has been provided obviously you can see this is one bar and another bar is here outer okay so this is my 12 diameter 2 bar which is going continuously got it this much is clear yeah now now for this beam you tell me which is a continuous support and which is an end support now for that what we need to understand i'll go to the drawing again yeah you see here okay this is that so i have a column here i don't have any beam running in this that means this is my end beam this is my end column or the end support similarly i have a column here i don't have a beam running in this direction so this is also my end support that means here both the condition are end so if both are end then what i'm supposed to do i just have to look here so i have to look end st extra steel at end support so that is why you can see a dash has been put why extra steel at continuous support is, there is nothing because there is no continuous support both the side you don't have beam that is both are end support so again in both the end support you have to provide a 16 diameter 2 bar so practically you can see here a 16 diameter 2 bar has been provided so this is one 16 diameter bar and this is another 16 diameter bar got it similarly here also we have provided a 16 diameter one bar okay and here also we have provided a 16 diameter another bar got it so practically this is how you are supposed to understand and this is how the drawing has to be uh, understood so i hope up to here you have enjoyed it and you have got an idea exactly how to uh, understand the drawings and all right now uh, i'm showing you all the beams and all the same concept has been adopted and for the same building i'm showing you the structural drawings again you can see it here also see it here top two steel bottom then the bottom curtainment this is a left extra this is the right extra yeah right so again this is how the reinforcement is given you can see the top left extra bottom curtainment and top right extra so again i'll play the video here yeah so right now i'm at this particular beam and i'll show you on the drawing where this uh, beam is all about i mean the location of this beam so if i go to the plinth beam layout right now i'm at this particular beam okay so we, i'm see because here i'm getting a staircase and this is that portion right now where we are and we are at this particular beam which is called as pb2 right so this particular beam is pb2 now i'll check the reinforcement details for this pb2 so search for pb2 so my pb2 is here again it's a 9 inch by 18 inch so now come to the bottom steel okay you have to provide a 16 diameter 2 bar so practically you can see bottom this is one bar and after that next to that we have another bar so this is a 16 diameter 2 bar and then again st straight is done and yeah pb2 then curtailment is 16 diameter 1 bar so you can see a curtainment bar here so this is a curtainment bar which is a 16 diameter one bar okay good now come to the top portion bottom is done now coming to the top side so if i go to the top now top steel again 
uh, in the mid span you have to provide a 12 diameter two bar so where is my mid span so this is the top is my mid span so I have to provide a 12 diameter two bar so you can see one bar which is gone completely and this also gone completely so this is your 12 diameter two bar good now now you check the column okay see I have a column here I have a column here so for this particular beam this column is the end column because beyond this we don't have any beam running so this is my end condition end support similarly this column is also end condition because I don't have a beam running in this direction see we have a beam this is not to be considered you have to take the horizontal one I mean it depends where exactly is your beam okay so if you are not able to follow still I'll go to the drawing part again see here now you can tell me so here I don't have any beam running so this is my end beam or end end support again this is also end support since both are end support so it's very simple I have to look for which one extra steel at continuous support I don't have to look here so that is why you can see they put a dash here now extra steel at end support which is a 12 diameter 2 bar so practically what you are supposed to do 12 diameter 2 bar you can see one and this is another this is a 12 diameter 2 bar end support on both the condition on both the side it is end support again it's a 12 diameter 2 bar in this way you have to take it got it so I hope up to here your concepts are clear and you are in a position to understand this particular structural drawing uh, the main intention of taking this drawing was about the end condition we should be in a position to understand what is end condition that is end support and the continuous support okay now for your understanding I'll give you one question here uh, just tell me what kind of support is this for this particular beam now for this particular beam this is my end support whereas this is my continuous support because for this column we have a beam on this direction right so this becomes my continuous got it similarly if I take this particular beam this is my end because beyond this I don't have a beam but this is a column I have but beyond this you have a beam then this becomes my continuous support got it so that is how it is to be understood and we'll try to see one more thing he here that is about the level difference which I told you that so we'll see the level difference also yeah so I'll, I'll just pause it here see you can see this beam this beam is at this level that is a bottom level whereas this beam we have put it over the stone masonry this is an, another level so you got it so this is your actually top of your plinth beam this is the top of your plinth beam and this is your ground level got it so that is why I told you that at the time of discussion of the structural drawing like it was mentioned I'll take you to that drawing yeah so what is written here beam top at below ground level and beam top at plinth level so right now we are standing here and these are the beams which we are seeing and these four beams one two three and four and practically you see one two three yeah one two three and this is the fourth beam these are over the ground level that is this will be my top of the plane whereas this beams no, these are at the bottom level okay that means the bottom in the sense this beams all these beams you can see no yeah this beams yeah sorry this beams okay this beams so this beams are blue in color so what is written for the blue color beam top at below ground level beam top at below ground level so that means the top of this is at the ground level below the ground level okay see which is my ground level this is my ground level the way the place where you can see the soil isn't it this is a ground level okay now this beam is below the ground level agree with me whereas this beam is above the ground level so this top level is my plinth level got it and once we do the casting we start to do the laterate masonry work over this so this is a practice what we adopt here got it so I hope up to here your, how your concepts are clear if you have any doubts you can always ask in the comment section or you can ask in the answer and question so I'll be there to answer you out okay anyhow once we finish this I'll be showing you the entire video of this once the plinth beam is also done I think most of the things I've covered it here only the thing is few things yeah you can see the level difference here also to put it in a better way check it out here see this is your plinth level and this is your ground level so this is your ground level what I have and this is my plinth level again for all these things they are given a cross section yeah I didn't explain all these things but anyhow we understood now uh, so yeah we'll do one thing we'll take up this particular discussion in the next lecture about uh, how to understand this uh, longitudinal view and also we did not understand about the stirrups we'll try to understand the stirrups also in the next lecture okay and we'll try to see all this part in the next lecture about the uh, curtail and bar and the other thing 
so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you